Welcome to today's demonstration of Vesta PMS. We'll be demonstrating the latest version, 1.2. So let's start off with what is PMX. It is a Microsoft Excel based add-in that transfers work order and operation information out of SAP into Excel. It allows a bi-directional communication, so you can make changes to dates and work centers, employee assignments, uh, revisions, uh, you can make changes to user statuses as well as other fields. Uh, we also allow you to create confirmations from Excel and you can then send those back into SAP. We support Excel versions 2007, 2010 and 2013. So what are some of the benefits to using the, the PMX? Well, it is already familiar to everybody in the company. Uh, standard features such as copy-paste and filtering are still available to users. Excel is typically deployed across an entire organization and it's easy to support by the IT staff. Uh, we have an easy installer on the client side and some setup on the server side. We have a simple UI. We allow, for instance, users to determine which columns they want to see in the result window. Uh, it is easy to configure. We also directly link from the Excel sheet into the SAP GUI so you could uh, select a field and then open up certain transactions directly. And then we also allow certain customization with macros. We have these macros that get called at certain intervals during the processing in PMX and we then execute any VBA code that is uh, situated in those macros. So the typical data flow between SAP and Excel using PMX you initiate the download from SAP through PMX of all the work order information that you require, similar to what you would see in IW38 in SAP. That information is then displayed in your worksheet and users then do what we call detailed dispatching. We make changes to dates, to personnel assigned, to durations, perhaps create and update um, user statuses and also create confirmations. PMX then takes that information and saves it back into SAP. As I mentioned before, we'll be showing the new version of PMX uh, 1.2 and we've added a few features. So we've changed the look, we've enhanced all the forms that we have, created more, more consistency uh, consistently. Uh, we've added internationalization, so we've, out of the box we support English, German, Dutch and Spanish and we have the ability to add more languages even after PMX has been installed. We support single sign-on with some uh, setup requirements on the customer side, of course. We've added field validation. So if you have a column that is, for instance, a date field, then that column will only take date fields in the correct language format as well. Uh, on the confirmation sheet, we now allow users to select which fields are visible. We also have the ability to customize which fields can be saved back into SAP. We have this concept of an XML mapping that can be changed. This is not something the end user would typically do. This is something that uh, the administrator would set up with us and that would then be deployed to each uh, individual user. We've added support for Excel 2013. You can now download user statuses. Previously, you had to create those manually. It was a tedious uh, job of doing that. And you can download them now using either one of our RFCs that we've created or import them from an XML document with a specified format. And that format we obviously share with customers as well. And we also allow users to import and export all preferences. Again, this is more for the administrator type person who will set up PMX as they see fit for the entire organization and then export the settings, preferences and import them on each client system. We do not export passwords, of course. Then, um, once you've made changes uh, in your Excel sheet and saved it to SAP, you get a result window back. We now allow you to save those results so you have an audit trail. During the load, you can cancel. We've made some performance changes during the load itself as well by adding our own RFCs. We have the ability to prevent users from saving their password. And in the connection setup, we now have a list of all the SAP systems available as they appear in your uh, SAP logon GUI. So with that, it's time for a demo. So PMX is available as this menu over here. It's a standalone menu. 
with these five buttons. So the first one initiates a load from SAP. Once you've made changes to those values, you can save them back to SAP. This, the preferences area allows you to set up connection information, which columns you want to have visible, also which selection parameters you'd like to see. And these last two buttons will open up uh, SAP transaction. Okay, so let's start off by loading some data from SAP. We do this by going to the From SAP button, and we're presented with the search form. The search form is divided in two areas. The top part is our save parameters, so we can make some entries in these parameters, give it a name and save. It's similar to what you'd find in the SAP GUI under variants, but it is self-contained within PMX. The bottom area here, these selection parameters, these are all customizable. So you can choose which fields you want to have here. You can have a single field, you can have more. There's an entire list that I will show briefly and we'll add some fields. So we go to preferences, then the selection parameters area. And here is the entire list of all the fields that are available to us. So we will add the completed in process and historical and outstanding uh, checkboxes. And if we wanted to, we could move these up and down in, in the order here. I will just leave them where they are. Now when I go back to from SAP, we will see down here that they have been populated or they have been added to the selection screen. We can load data from SAP in multiple ways. So if I, for instance, knew an order number, let's say 100, I could just enter it like that. If I wanted to download multiple order numbers, I could comma separate them. We can also load a range of orders. So if I wanted to load in everything between 100 and 200, I could specify it like this with two periods in the middle there. And that's actually what we will be doing today. So I'll be loading a range of orders that I happen to know. And um, for the first load, we will do all types of documents, completed, in process, historical and outstanding. And let's give this a name, let's call this all range, and we'll save this so that when we come back, we'll have it in our drop down here. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I click the go button to initiate the load from SAP. Let's go ahead and uh, look at our selection criteria that we entered. Uh, exactly these results should match what you would get in transaction IW38 with those same parameters. So it starts off with showing the PMX confirmation screen. I will skip over that for now and head to the PMX main screen. Now, this is populated with orders and operations, and we'll go into detail about what these features are here a little bit later. For now, I just want to show that we have downloaded uh, 72 operations, essentially. The first row is just the header row. So if we wanted to make changes, if we wanted to change the results here, if we only actually wanted to see the, um, the in-process documents. I can go back to the From SAP screen, select from the drop-down again what we had previously set up, and now I unselect the completed historical and outstanding, I'll save this again, and again I load now. And then when this comes back, we should have fewer results because those documents uh, would not have been loaded, the completed and historical ones. So as you see, we have fewer results back now. So one of the advantages of uh, bringing SAP data into Excel is that you can use standard Excel features. So we have the drop-down list, for instance, or the, the uh, filter list available on every field. We can sort on any field. So standard uh, Excel functionality is available to you. We've also, as I mentioned before, we've created the ability to prevent users from entering incorrect data. So since uh, this field I have highlighted here is a duration field, I cannot just enter any text. text. It will not allow you. And the same for dates, for instance, you have to enter a valid date. So I couldn't just enter any text. It complains there as well. One other thing that we have is we have these drop downs for work centers. So this is the list of all the work centers that we have available uh, for a particular plant. And then corresponding to that work center, we have the list of all the employees assigned to that work center. So we can, for instance, change, if, if we had a look at the uh, list of people assigned here, we only have three uh, people in that list. We can 
again, use some of the standard Excel functionality and move these values up, it automatically clears the person that was assigned there because they no longer appear in this work center. And we can now go and assign different people to these tasks. We can make changes to the duration here. This time we'll do it with a number. And the activity has to be adjusted as well, of course. And we can also change the date to actually bring it into the current year. And one more thing to point out, all of the information that we have on here is actually on two levels, but displayed on one level. So we have orders and operations displayed at the same time. So the rows that I have selected here all belong to the same order. And hence you see, for instance, the order description is replicated, as well as the revision. And we have added the ability to keep these custom, uh, to keep these consistent. So if I change one, so if I change this revision to 25, as soon as I hit enter or just leave the cell and click somewhere else, it will update all the rows associated with this order. So there we go. So that's uh, one way of keeping data consistent. Okay, so if I'm happy with the changes that I've made here, I can head back to the Vesta PMX uh, menu and then hit the two SAP button. This brings up a summary screen initially of what will happen. So we'll be updating one order and one operation. The order was this uh, revision change that I made. And then the two operations were these two here, where I changed the person and also the duration on one of them. We can have a look at a little bit more detail for those. If we go to the order, you'll see here that most of these will be ignored, as you would expect, since we only made a few changes. This is the one that will be updated. You can right click on that and show details. And you can see the changes that will take effect. So you can see the revision it was previously W27 and will be W25 when we send that to SAP. And similarly, we can have a look at what will be changed on the, um, on the operation side. So we can compare these fields and just make sure that everything is according to what we want. If I had accidentally made a change to an operation in this case that I don't want to commit to SAP, I could uncheck it. I'll leave it checked for now. So if I'm happy, I'll click the OK button. And now it goes and calls standard SAP BARPIs to make changes to these orders and operations. Uh, we create or we update one order at a time essentially. And the reason we do that is that if there's a, an error on an operation or order, it will only prevent that order from being updated and not all the other orders in the call. So a typical case of an acceptable error message would be that somebody else has an order open in the SAP GUI for editing. SAP will not allow us to make changes in that case. All right, so in this case, we are in luck. We have no errors, everything's good. We can go look at some more details here. And these are all the messages returned by SAP. So there's some warnings here that we can react on, something about a date not being a workday. And that's something that we can deal with and have a closer look at if we require to. We can download these results as a text file, so you have an audit trail. Let's close this down. And what we'll do now is we'll open up the SAP transaction directly from in here. So by having any row selected that belongs to this order and then clicking on the IW32 button, it will automatically, with the logon information that we have specified, the connection information that we've specified in the preferences, it will open up the transaction for you and log you in automatically. And there we go. It automatically opened it up for us. So let's have a look at the the fields that we changed. We go to the operations tab. Let's have a look. We changed this to 11 and 11. And we can also go and see that we now have the ELEC work center and we have been assigned. And if we head to the dates, we can see that we've moved this into 2013. So a nice little way that you can confirm that you've made uh, appropriate changes in SAP. Uh, but you never really have to leave Excel to make uh, use of PMX. Go over to the confirmation sheet now. Confirmation sheet is similar to the, the main sheet, a little bit different in that we don't actually bring a lot of data in here. It is purely uh, to show which orders you're working on and to, make, uh, to create confirmations on those. So if we wanted to create a confirmation on, let's say, the order down here, Let's say we did three hours worth of work and we installed a pump. We can do so. And 
Then we can say to SAP again, good look at what we'd actually be changing, similar to what we've seen before. Hit OK, and that should now go and create this confirmation for us on that order and operation unless this order has not been released, in which case we will get back an error message saying we need to release it. Uh, it appears to have been released, and we have a confirmation confirmed. Okay. Let's head back to SAP quickly, just to confirm that that was created. We'll go to transaction IW47, and we will just search for all Confirmations that were created today. And here we go. It is this confirmation over here. Let's open it up and we see we added three hours and we installed the pump. So just a simple way of creating confirmations. So that's the basic functionality. Let's have a quick look at what we have in the preferences area. So we've already gone over the selection parameters. We can change which columns we have visible in the result window. So if we just compare to what we have under the, the, P, the confirmation sheet, the, row, the, the values top down here correspond to the columns left to right here. And the same for the work order and operation fields. Here you can also again see the blue and the black indicating uh, editable and non-editable fields. So a lot of fields that you could choose from. Most people just choose a handful that they typically need to see. The last thing I like to touch on is a customization point for customers. So we allow the specification of a macro template in this case. That will automatically get called at the end of execution of the load. So I'll do another load here. In this case, I'll load on a revision. We'll do all the, the document types. So this will call two additional macros for us. Uh, one that will create the scan chart that you see right here. The scan chart just gives you a nice little overview of, first of all, the date range that all the orders and operations were in that just got returned by our search, as well as the work on each of these operations and where that falls in line with every other one. So this is similar to something you would see in a Microsoft project, for instance, not quite as powerful. You cannot drag anything in here. It's purely visual, but it's a nice example of what we can do with a standard PMX uh, for custom development. And then the other thing that we've done is we've created a set of macros that will summarize all the planned work and list the work in a pie chart here per employee. And so this way you can see where your work is going, who's got the most workload, and also there's an unassigned area. So for each of these personnel here, we've created a sheet. So you could either directly just go to them there, or we have a summary here. So if I wanted to see what Rob was up to, I could get a nice summary of his workload for the, the next week or so. I can just go back to the main sheet. And then I can also look at what's unassigned. There's a big chunk here of work that hasn't been assigned. That's obviously a problem, something that we need to address and look into. I can look at these and then from the main sheet, I can assign these to uh, different personnel again. So that's just, a, again, a nice little added uh, macro on top of standard PMX that just enhances the way that you use the data. So that concludes our demo for today. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to email us at info at